says that I was sick from the red book, and uh, I want to know more about my world. That's what we should be wanting to know there today, more, more reading more and hearing more about him. And one day we'll be like him. Hey, thank you, choir. Good job there. Thank you for the good job that you've done. Several announcements here. Well, we have several cards. I read them Wednesday night, but a lot of folk uh, are not here on Wednesday night. And uh, But let me give them to you. This is from uh, Tony and Timber. This is for Miss Eileen. After uh, she went to be with the Lord, you remember Miss Eileen, some of you, the elderly lady that sat here at the front. 
Uh, this is a thank you for uh, being there for our mother. Your prayers, cards, and flyers were a true blessing to us. Thank you for giving us her, her freedom by using Brother Ray's oxygen and uh, the bag. And so I uh, appreciate that, and we'll put it on the, uh, on the bulletin board in the back there. And then I want to remind you that uh, uh, memorial service will be here at the church, and that'll be Saturday the 14th at 11 o'clock. And uh, right after that, <clears throat> I think the ladies are going to have a meal prepared for them and so their family. And so remember that. That'll be Saturday, August the 14th, and that'll be at 11 a.m. for her. And then we also have a <clears throat> thank you, uh, our, our card here, for, uh, thanking us for praying for them. And, and they also, this uh, family is from Pennsylvania, and this is the Lynn and Joyce Cardwell uh, from Pennsylvania, they sent fifty dollars to the church, uh, and they listen on the internet. And they also made a reference to how they wish they could be here. It says we want to thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, we are are watched from Pennsylvania every Sunday and Wednesday. I wish we lived there so we could be at uh, the services. Your prayers got. Uh, me through uh, cancer and Lynn's uh, tumor being benign. We will be coming down to visit Ray and Bobby soon. Y'all gonna have some company. I'm just telling you if you didn't know it. And better load up the refrigerator, hadn't you? And uh, hope to come to church uh, while we are there. And so <clears throat> you pray for these folk, and I appreciate that. And as I said, they sent a $50 uh, Fifty dollars in cash to the church is a love gift, and we put that uh, into the treasure there. And then uh, this is a, a note also to remind every, everyone that uh, it's called uh, "Join Us for a Celebration of Life in Love, Love and Memory of Joe." You all y'all remember Miss Joe uh, Witcher, and that'll be Saturday, August the twenty-first at two to two uh, three thirty. From two to two, three thirty. Excuse me. From two to three thirty. I'll get it out in a moment. And uh, and Miss Joe, uh, we sure do miss her. And, and uh, uh, y'all continue to pray for Brother David during this time. And uh, that'll be on uh, uh, Saturday, August the twenty fourth, from two to three thirty. And uh, they want to invite uh, her church family, David, their church family that is. And so uh, I hope that many of you can come and be here for that. Then I want to remind you also of our, our services tonight at uh, 6 o'clock. I encourage everyone to be back in our services. Let's be in prayer our, our services tonight, excuse me, and then prayer meeting on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Try to get somebody to come with you, and let's be faithful, and uh, let's just be faithful to the house of God. In these last days, that uh, I think we're in the latter days of the latter days, you know, and I think we ought to just determine in our hearts and minds, I'm going to be faithful to the Lord during these times, and so I hope you will, and be back tonight. Then our homecoming is August the 22nd, and uh, that'll start, uh, I'm going to encourage everyone to start now inviting friends and family. And August 22nd, we'll have uh, our services here, start at 1030, uh, give our singers a little extra time to sing. And then also uh, after that, after the preaching and all, and some history of the church, we'll go out to the fellowship hall and have a good time of enjoying a good meal out there for our homecoming. This will be the 60th year and uh, of uh, the founding of, and chartering of uh, True Light Baptist Church. And so I hope that you'll uh, take uh, uh, be taking the time and the effort and the prayers and all to get folk to come and pray much God will save somebody that day. So keep that in mind if you would. Brother Marty, come on sing one for us if you would, please, sir, and then we'll go over our prayer list. We have several folk we need to pray for today. Names have been given to me, and we have several that needs our prayers. And so I ask Marty to sing one just a moment for us before we do all that. <clears throat> I'm going to see old Sue Alcom likes this one real good, so I'll try it. Did I mention that I love him? <clears throat> David sang the praises of the glory of Jehovah. Paul preached that all is lost. Save knowing Christ, little J. 
John said his precious by leaning on his bosom so for a moment may I humbly testify did I mention that I love him how I worship and adore him when I can see no way he makes a way and did I mention he's been faithful to every promise he ever made me I love him that's all I want to say how many sermons can be preached about this Jesus how many songs can be sung about God's Son. There's not enough words, enough notes in the music to tell the story of all the Savior's done. Did I mention that I love him how I worship and adore him when I can see no way he makes a way and did I mention he's been faithful to every promise he ever made me I love him that's all I want to say. And did I mention he's been faithful to every promise he ever made me? I love him. That's all I want to say. Amen. I was thinking about this week and just then as I was singing about all these promises he makes us. He just makes all kind of promises. And it's in his word. You just got to get in there to find them. And they're to you if you want them. Thank you, brother. And that is so true. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that good song. Let's go over our prayer list. And let me say we have some prayer lists back on the table as you go out. This door here, right on the left, there's a small table, and there's some prayer lists there if you'd like to get one. We've put them out on Wednesday nights, and if you would like to pick one up, you're welcome to do so. And on Wednesday nights, I go through the whole prayer list. I just call everybody's name out. I know you have it, but I want to call it out anyway. And uh, then uh, we just uh, have some that we definitely try to point out on Sundays and different times and uh, uh, Sunday nights. But I, I want us to remember these folk in prayer. I have a family here, the Phillips Watson family, 49 years old, died of a massive heart attack. And they had had the COVID. And so let's pray for that. I tell you, this stuff is, I, I told somebody the other day, I don't know if we're ever going to really be over this stuff. Uh, sometime I feel like it's just the judgment of God on this nation, and uh, uh, it's just it's here. And uh, somebody said, "Well, what can we do?" Well, they say the shots ain't doing this. Now the mask ain't doing this, and all this. We don't know what to do. You're just up in the air about all this stuff. I said, "We that are God's people got to trust God. That's what we got to do, and that's what God wants us to do. Trust God. Have faith in God." And God's in control of my life. If I get it, if you get it, God's in control of our lives. And we're going to have to trust him. Man. That's just the way it is. Then I have another request here. Uh, Aubrey Witt uh, fell out of the tree, uh, tree stand, broke the, uh, back in two places, also ribs, and also has cancer. Please remember this request also in your prayers today. Also, keep praying for Brother Tim Elliott. Uh, also, Penny, Judy, and JB, continue to pray for them. I'm just glad they're able to be here today. Keep praying for Faye and Jean, and then Jerry and Carolyn Horn, Billy and Sue, also Karen. Keep praying for Karen Johnson in your prayers. And uh, 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 Yes, ma'am.
Okay. Okay, you're back. Okay, all right, let's remember that. And uh, also uh, uh, pray for Danny and Dolores. Dolores not feeling the best this morning. Continue to pray for her. Bonnie, uh, Ray, keep praying for Ray's leg and uh, his legs, basically, and keep praying for him. And uh, Bobby, uh, she's, would you know when you're going to have that surgery? Okay. Okay. All right, we'll pray for that. Everything will come out well on that. My brother Steve, keep praying that if it's the Lord's will, he'd be able to be a uh, candidate for these shots for his cancer. Also, Tony, uh, Wiley's brothers to have surgery. Is it this week, Wiley? Is it this week? Come in to pray for him. Also, Donald. Uh, Donald Allen, to pray for Donald. Donald's not doing good at all. He's been in and out of the hospital this week, and uh, he really hadn't got any really good reports on any of this, his heart. And uh, they just basically sent him home, Connie said, to die. So pray for him, if you would. And then Arnold Booth, pray for Brother Arnold back there. He said he's had a good week and uh, been feeling some better, and he's got to go back also uh, for some tests and things. Uh, I think the end of the month, right, Arnold? So, and so let's remember that. Ushers, if you'll come this morning, we'll receive our tithes, offerings, faith, promise, givings. Let's all stand, if you would. Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's remember, that's a lot of requests for that. Let's pray for them, all right? Everyone stand that can, if you would, please. I appreciate it. Let's ask the Lord's blessings on the offering today. Brother Ronnie, come on. This man has and his wife has traveled 1,700 miles on the road this week. I told him he'd make a good trucker, wouldn't he? He looks like a trucker, don't he? Look at him. Man, come on here, breaker, breaker. I'm a lawyer. Right, you're a lawyer. Oh, okay, pray for us. <laughs> let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we sure are grateful today to be back in the house of God today. Sure do thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for salvation most of all. Lord, we come on behalf of these requests pastors made today. There's so many of them, Lord, but Lord, you know each one. Lord, I ask you, God, you'd answer according to thy precious will. Those that are sick, you might touch. Those that need surgery, Lord, you might minister unto them. Lord, I pray for these uh, loved ones that's passed away. You'd comfort their hearts, help them today. I pray for that soul that may be here today in their service, God, that's lost and undone. I pray the sweet spirit of God convict that heart today. God, help them to see the need of salvation. Bless the man of God. Give him wisdom this morning. Fill him afresh and anew. I ask you now, Father, that you'd bless this offering now. And all is accomplished today. We'll be careful to give you honor, the praise, and the glory. We we'll ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right. Remain standing where we got, thank, brother. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Sing it twice. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. And then I want to, uh, you know, I can't recognize that all of our visitors, but I do want to recognize some folk back on the very back row there. And they used to be here. I guess y'all come for a year or so, didn't you, brother? I forgot which state you're from. 
Okay, and y'all, do y'all remember these folk? All right. They, they, he's an hour and ten minutes uh, in Virginia working. So y'all drove down this morning, didn't you? God bless you. Thank y'all for coming this morning. Is your boss man still with you? Well, tell him to get his stuff down here, too. We want to see him. <laughs> All right, Miss Penny, you ready to sing? All right, let her rip. Go ahead. Yeah. Lord, you told us to ask and you would grant it, just not, and you would open the this time the my request needs an answer divine I have a friend who's in need of a touch from your head so touch them and heal them as only you can. We must pray sin for our weakness. For only this, by His grace, we are healed. So while you're touching and blessing, this friend of mine, Lord, I'm sharing, and by faith they're healed. I'm not asking for myself this time, though my request needs an answer divine. touch them and heal them as only you can. Touch them and heal them as only you can. Amen. I just want to thank the Lord for saving me. You know, before I got sent, I fasted on the Lord. When I was getting farther, farther away from God, I had a brain aneurysm. But praise the Lord, I know he let me live. And I know it's my testimony to not to serve the Lord and to live for Jesus. He let me try my wings because I asked him to. No wind all the time I couldn't fly. He gave my feet their liberty and let them walk away. And all the time I never asked him why. But now I'm beginning to wonder 
preach real fast okay <laughs> but I want you to sing that song the blind man you know sing yeah I like that one I've been thinking about that and you listen to the words this is a good song you really listen to the words of this Jack is Linda oh okay all right let's pray for uh, her today okay uh, how about singing that for me we okay go ahead and turn to, um, wait a minute turn to Lamentations chapter 1 now you say where's that at <laughs> that's in the Old Testament right after the book of Jeremiah it's then Lamentations the, the five sorrows of Lamentation and uh, if you can't find it go to the front of your Bible the index there Lamentations okay I was working in town one afternoon Attending some business affair I heard a commotion A couple streets over And wonder what's happening there A young man was running from In that direction Start just to catch his breath I asked him to please tell me What was the hurry smile up at me and he said I was trying to catch the crippled man did he run past this way he was rushing home to tell everyone what Jesus did today and the mute man was telling myself and the death girl is leave me to answer God's call. Well, it's hard to believe, but if you don't trust me, ask the blind man, he saw it all. Amen. My friend, if the troubles that burden you carry are heavy and dragging you down, and you tried everything you could possibly think of, but there's no relief to be found. The very same Jesus that will to the future of the blind man, the death, and the lame is still reaching out in your hour of trouble. One touch and you're never the same. You'll be trying to kiss the crippled man. Did he run past this way? He was rushing home to tell everyone 
what Jesus did today. And the mute man was telling myself and the dead girl is leaving to answer God's call. Well, it's hard to believe, but if you don't trust me, ask the blind man, he saw it all. Ask the blind man, he saw it all. He saw it all. It? That is so true. Thank you so much, Miss Penny. Thank you for the, all those songs. Thank you, Marty, the choir. Great job. Turn over. Have you found Lamentations? How many's found it? Whole jam. Okay, well, we're ready to go then, ain't we? Lamentations chapter 1. Turn over there if you would, and I'm going to bring you up to this point. You know, Jeremiah, he was the writer. Of course, the Holy Ghost is the author. But uh, Jeremiah wrote uh, after the book of Jeremiah, the five, uh, these five chapters, they are the lamentations of Jeremiah. The word lamentations means mournings. That's what it means, mournings. And so these were the mournings or the lamentations of Jeremiah. Now what happened here was Jeremiah, God called him to be the prophet to go to Judah, Israel that is, his people, and to... Uh, tell them to repent. They had, they had forsaken God. They had went away from God and got into idolatry, all types of wickedness and ungodliness. And, and Jeremiah was sent of God to uh, warn the people and to tell them uh, unless they repent, unless they get right with God, that they, would, uh, they would, was going to go into captivity. They would go into the Babylonian captivity and uh, that's exactly what happened. They would not get right with God. They would not get their hearts right. They would not repent. They tried to cover their sins and all this, but they finally ended up, uh, they went into the Babylonian uh, 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 captivity. And that was for 70 years, by the way. Now, the Lamentations of Jeremiah uh, tells about uh, the sufferings that these people done, the pitiful sufferings that the children of Israel faced because they wouldn't listen to God. Somebody say God was mad at them. No, God wasn't mad at them. God loved them. You say, how could God love them? But he was chastening them and he was trying to get them uh, to repent and come back to him and be what they ought to be for him. And uh, if you take, uh, for instance, a judge in a courtroom, he judges people and uh, he has no compassion for his uh, being compassionate. He has no uh, relations to them, uh, relationship that is to them as family or friends or whatever it may be most of the time that is, but uh, a big smart majority of the time. And when he passes judgment on them, uh, his judgment is stern and strict and, and cold and no compassion there or no love. But you take a mother and daddy when they... Uh, pass their judgment on a child, their children, they're doing it because they love them and they want them to turn out right. And that's exactly the same meanings here of God with his children, the children of Israel here and his children now, all of us that are saved by his wondrous grace. Now as we go into the book of Lamentations, I'm going to read several places here and I'm going to go like from chapter 1 and then 2 and just read a verse here. But these are the mornings, these are the situations that these people had to face. Jeremiah preached to these people 40-some years and never did see them repent, never did see them come to the place of getting right with God. And, uh, but the, finally, God had mercy after uh, their, their chastening, after God had to chasten and judge their sin. Uh, and be sure of this, God will judge our sin. God does not let sin get by. And, uh, and so we find here that uh, in chapters 1, we find the first st state or the first condition they were in. He said, how doth the city sit solitary? This is talking about Jerusalem. That was full of people. How is she become as a widow? She that was great among the nations and princesses among the providence. How is she become tributary? Look in chapter 2 in verse 9. Her gates, this is talking, of course, about Jerusalem and, and uh, the Israelites. He said, her gates are sunk into the, uh, to the ground. He hath destroyed and broken her bars. Her king, uh, king and her princesses are among the Gentiles. The law is no more. 
her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. Go over, if you would, to chapter some, uh, 4 now, if you would, and look with me there in verses number uh, 6. He said, For the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom that was overthrown as in a moment and no hands stayed on her. And then I want you to look, if you would, in verse number 12. And that's really our text verse where he said, The kings of the earth, now listen to this verse, The kings of the earth and all the inhabitants of the world. Now look at this. The kings of the earth and all the inhabitants of the world. Now you've got to remember that we didn't, they didn't have radio, TV, internet. They didn't have nothing. But I guess they, just by word of mouth from kings to one nation to another nation... The Bible said all the kings and all the inhabitants, the Bible said, of the world, notice this, would not have believed that the adversity, that's their problems, and the enemies should have entered into the gates of Jerusalem. That's a, a, an astounding verse to me when I read that. All the world, all the kings... Uh, you say, what are you, what are you saying? I'm telling you, Israel was known, of uh, 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 the children of Israel was known all across the world that God was on their side. They had seen what God had done in their lives. Now, I know they didn't have the population we have now and all that kind of stuff, but they had a, there was a lot of people in the world. And all the world and all the kings and the inhabitants of the world they stood amazed at what happened to Jerusalem and to the Israelites, God's chosen people. They knew that God was on their side. And all this happened because they was not willing to repent and to get their hearts right with God. God gave them love and kindness, and God gave them a, great, a period of grace. God gave them a prophet to come and to warn them and to tell them, and they abused the prophet Jeremiah. They throwed him in jails and prisons and all this. You know, I read about the life of uh, Jeremiah uh, uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday or day before. Anyway, I read about his life, and at the end of his life, uh, he was, of course, brought into captivity with them. And uh, they put him in prisons, another prison, with all the prisoners, that, all the wicked and vile uh, men and, and people that were, uh, they had brought into Babylon. And they put him in the prisons there, several of them. And uh, Jeremiah was put in there with them. He had to live with them for a short period of time. And then the, uh, the history tells us that the king took him out, took him out. And let him walk free and let him be a free man uh, and go anywhere and do anything he wanted to do the rest of his life. But Jeremiah uh, never did really see the freedom that, uh, that he wanted the children of Israel to see. Uh, he saw them go into bondage. He never seen them come out of that bondage. But they did after 70 years. In verse number 21 of chapter 5, they, the Bible said, Turn thou, uh, uh, thou us unto these, what they prayed unto God. And by the way, chapter 5 is a, is a complete chapter of prayer to God. Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. Renew our days as of old. But thou hast utterly rejected us. Thou art very wroth against us. But God did have mercy. And God remembered the Israelites. God remembered Jerusalem. God remembered. And God brought them out of this captivity. But it was a terrible time. And if you really want to read a lot about I started to read the whole uh, fifth chapter of, um, of, uh, of Lamentations, uh, this book of sorrow and mourning and all, but if you read it, you'll see that their orphans, the fa they became uh, fatherless, the children, uh, the people became, the parents couldn't take care of their children, uh, they were starving to death, they were eating out of garbage cans, they was eating anything they could get their hands on. Uh, you'll find that uh, the children, uh, uh, the Bible even speaks of them in this fifth chapter is about how they were so lean that they were like sticks. Uh, they were so weak and sickly and the, even the children had to feed them some. Uh, their own children would have to go out and try to get food for them because they were the parents could not take care of their children. And the death and, and all the things that happened uh, because they would not listen to God. 
Well, that ought to send a red flag up in every child of God's life today. If you're a saved child of God here today, that ought to send a red flag up in our lives that God is not going to tolerate His children being disobedient to Him. Uh, to obey, as I preached several weeks ago, is better than sacrifice. God just wants us to obey Him. Trust and obey, and there's no other way, as the old songwriter wrote, to be happy in Jesus, but to what? but to trust and obey. God wants us to believe him, and God wants us to obey him, you know. And so we see the terrible condition, and really verse number 12, uh, uh, if you want to just put it down to our language, here's what they said. They basically said, who would, have, who would have ever thought it? Who would have ever thought this would happen to the children of Israel? Who would have ever thought this would happen to the people of God? That's what they said. They stood amazed. They said uh, uh, they, they would not have believed it. Who would have ever believed this would have ever happened to them is what they said. The kings and the whole habitation of the earth. Now, with that thought in mind, <laughs> I want to preach. They lost something precious, didn't they? They lost the presence of God, the blessings of God. They lost the power of God. They lost the anointing of God. They lost everything. I mean, they just, it was all taken away from them. All, everything that uh, those at one time eat delicate foods and all kinds of, had all kinds of food to eat, God was blessing them. They went to poverty, to the place that they had to eat out of the cans, the garbage cans and things like that, or whatever they could get their hands on. And many of them died, uh, as I've done a little studying on this, many of them died from starvation because they didn't have nothing to eat. But I, I, they, they had that which was so precious taken away from them. And that's what I want to preach on, that thought, if I can get it out here, on how to keep what we've got. You know, God has been good to our church here, True Light Baptist Church. God has truly been good to this church. The blessings of the Lord down through the years. You know, we're approaching homecoming. Maybe I should have saved this to preach for homecoming, but I just had it burning in my heart and mind. I just had to do it. Uh, we may not be here for this homecoming. We may be in glory, mightn't we? You know, the Lord may come back or, hey, who knows? The Lord may choose to take us another way. But the whole thing about it is this. We don't want to lose what God has given us. And there's a lot of churches. Sue and I were coming to church this morning, and she said, well, look at there. Uh, I said, what's that? And they had a for sale sign on 66 on a church up here. Been there for many, many years, and it's been put into real estate's hands. They've closed the doors. You're seeing this happening all over the place. Churches are losing what God has given them down through the years. All over this country is happening, you know. We don't want to lose what God has blessed us with and given us here. Our church is not a perfect church. Anybody that thinks it is, you're very, very wrong. We're not perfect. Uh, we make mistakes and we, uh, we do things that sometimes uh, not everybody agrees with or maybe, uh, you know, uh, that uh, we're just not perfect and nobody is. And that's not trying to make an excuse for anything, but you're not going to find. You get a bunch of imperfect people together, you ain't going to have a perfect church, are you, you know? And that's that's just the way it is. It ain't the, in any ministry, that, that's the way it is. In any church, any ministry, there's nobody perfect there but the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to tell you today, we want to keep what God has given us. God has blessed us with a Bible preaching church. Down through the years, many years ago, 60 some years ago, God established a, a, a local church in this community called True Light Baptist Church. Now, this is not the only church in this community. We have a lot of good Bible preaching churches. I'd be foolish to stand here and tell you that this was the only church. Well, I'd be an idiot, wouldn't I? You know, don't say amen there. But anyway, I would. I'd be an idiot to, to proclaim that this is the only Bible preaching church and good church in it. No, no. There's good churches all around this community. Just right up above us right here, Woodlong Baptist Church. It's got a tremendous church. God's had his hand on that church many years. And when Mr. A uh, Pastor Asbury, Asbury I, I never could say his name real good, but, but uh, God used that man in a mighty way. And a lot of people going to heaven because of that little old man's ministry there. And God had his hand on that church and that there. And many other churches. I could just go on. There's no need in starting to name them. But there are some good Bible preaching churches. We don't want to lose that. God has given us a Bible preaching church. Still believes this old King James Bible. Still preaches it and teaches it. Still believes it's the word of God. 
God's blessed us with a beautiful building, facilities here. God has blessed us with the mission programs. God has blessed us uh, with uh, uh, this little old van ministry. It's just been amazing to see the hand of God move in that. And then on top of that, these little old Congo people over there this morning uh, and uh, trying to, uh, to teach them about Jesus and give them the gospel and trying to get them to where uh, they can establish a little old Congo church over here in Sol Salisbury somewhere. And uh, um, Salisbury, excuse me, in High Point over here. Uh, God has just blessed us uh, uh, to be able to let us have a little part in something like this, you know. And, and I just go, can go on, the radio work, the uh, internet min ministries, and all the different things. And you could go on and on and on. The Lord has blessed us, and, and he's met the needs of the church. Financially, he's met the needs of the church. God has been good in that area, and we bless the Lord for that. I mean, I know that's God. That's not me. That's not you. That's the Lord. And we're not rich, but I thank the Lord when this $7,000 air condition went out the other week. Thank the Lord the money was there to put it back in. Isn't that a blessing? That's the goodness of God is what I'm saying. And all these things, and... Um, and the Lord has truly blessed us. And, and uh, this church right now has no debt whatsoever. Everything's paid for. The buildings are paid for. The vans are paid for. I mean, uh, the, the little bus out here is paid for. God has used people to take care of all that. Our missions is met every, every quarter uh, when it comes time to meet them. And, and uh, I'm just saying God has been good. God has been tremendously good. We don't want to. And then there's been people saved, you know. There's been people saved through the years here, this 60-some years. And even these years that we've been here, we've got to see a few folks saved. And that's a blessing, you know, just to see what God has done and what God is doing. Well, we don't want to lose that. Israel had the blessings of God. And, and churches today are at God's hands on them. We don't want to lose what God has really given us. And, uh, and so I want to leave uh, you some thoughts today on how we can keep what God's got and give us. Let me give you some thoughts. First of all, I think the first thing we've got to do, if we want to keep what we got, number one, we've got to fan it. <laughs> we got to fan it. Now you say, what do you mean? Well, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, turn over there in the book of Ephesians, somebody say, well, where do we fan it at? Well, I'll tell you where we fan it. Uh, the, uh, Paul tells us over here in Ephesians chapter 3 and look in verse number 21. He said, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. And so we, the first thing we need to do is we need to fan it right here. We need to, you know, when you fan something, you, uh, you keep it going, you know. For instance, uh, have you ever uh, had a, uh, you know, uh, some, uh, they don't do it now, but years ago we used to burn trash outside. You remember doing all that? Uh, I mean, nobody food with anybody come around and getting you getting your uh, trash and hauling it off and all that kind of stuff and you had to have one bucket here for this and one bucket here for that and all that kind of man you just took everything cans and anything that was in there throw it in a pile throw you some uh, fire to that uh, some people put a little kerosene on it don't put no gas on it man that'd really fix you up but to put a little kerosene and start it up or it's or just start it out and start a fire and burn your fire. But you stayed around it and made sure it didn't get out of hand, you know. But uh, sometime uh, we'd do that and it flays up and then it gets down. You just got the little old coals in there, the little old, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying. And, uh, uh, and you would say, well, uh, mom would say, hey, you forgot some of this trash. And so we'd go back up there and what we'd do We'd throw a little bit on there and we'd take a cardboard or something that we had out of a box or bag and we'd do like this. You know what I was doing? I was fanning it. You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, whew, it, it, the flames would flare back up. Well, you know, that's the way it is in the church. We need to keep fanning it. We don't need to let it die out, you know. We don't need to let it uh, uh, come to the place that uh, what God is doing in the church. We need to make sure that we're giving him the praise and the glory and the thing that, that he deserves. And that's what he's talking about. When we, be, we decide that uh, God doesn't need the glory any longer uh, and that we begin to think, well, we've arrived, we've come to that place. Now, we're in the Bible. Is there a church that come to that place where they didn't seem like they needed God anymore? 
Can anybody tell me where it is? It's Revelation chapter 3. I'll answer that question for you. And it's the church at Lycidia. And the Bible said that they had come to the place of lukewarmness. And they had come to the place that they had no need of God. They said we're rich and we're full and we have all this and that. And then God says to this church, he said, but you don't realize you're blind, you're naked, uh, uh, you need God. And oh, how we need God. Let me, we need God's glory in the midst of the church. We need God's power in the midst of the church. Uh, Years ago, the old Moody Church in Chicago, that God used a man by the name of D.L. Moody to start. Many years ago, D.L. Moody, uh, God led him with a, a little old, a handful of Sunday school kids, and he uh, he started visiting uh, kids and bringing them into a little storefront building, and and uh, he'd go out, he'd get him some little bit pieces of candy, or or he'd pick him up some little old pocket watches or something. They'd just buy these little old trinkets or whatever. He'd go around and visit the kids, and he'd say, "Now, if you come to my Sunday school class in the morning down here at this building, I'll give you one." And they'd come, and it started off, I think, with 20 or 30 he started off with, and, and that thing began to grow. And did you know that thing grew? He was having 1,500 children. <laughs> he had to go to bigger buildings and all, but he had to get some adults to help him. He had gone, grown to, after a period of a year or two, he'd grown to 1,500 boys and girls was coming to his Sunday school class there in those buildings. And it wasn't too long after that that adults began to come. Kids was getting saved, bringing their mom and daddy. And that's how the Moody Church began there in Chicago, Illinois. And uh, that great church, uh, finally, they built, and I've seen pictures of it inside. Uh, and it was unreal. I'm talking about the, 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 uh, the first uh, buildings and all. And it was unreal of the, the capacity of that. People, eight to 10,000 people would pack into that building, not only on Sunday morning, but Sunday night and Wednesday night. They had to get, uh, if you wanted to get in, it got to the place. If you wanted to get in on Sunday night and Wednesday night, you had to get a ticket. Can you imagine that? You have to have a ticket. We'd have to stand out here and say, folks, if you've got to have a ticket to get in tonight because it's so full. Wouldn't that be something? You know? uh, and that's the way it was. And the Moody Church, God blessed, and thousands and thousands and thousands of people were saved through the ministry of the Moody Bible Church there in Chicago, Illinois. And God blessed it in such a way. Uh, and they began to build some different uh, Sunday school departments and places. So, I mean, it just uh, they had to build and, and rebuild. And, and they come, somebody come one day, there was people touring uh, the building, and they said, uh, look, uh, can you tell us uh, how in the world do you keep all this place uh, uh, warm in the wintertime? You know it's cold in Chicago, you know, in the winter. How do you keep these classrooms with all these people and all this warm? How, I mean, you have these uh, services, and, and how do you keep them warm? And uh, a man said, come on, I'll show you. And he took them downstairs, and, um, and he took them to a room, and in that room he heard a rumble. Something was rumbling in there. It just sounded like a big rumbling noise. And he said, this is how we keep this place warm. And uh, and they said, well, how? And he said, well, open the door. And they opened the door. And when they did, there were over seven hundred to a thousand men, just men, on their face begging God to bless the services that was about to start, begging God to send the power of God down on the services, begging God to send His glory down and to save souls. Over 700 to 1,000. They said, that's the way we keep this place warm right there. You know, I don't know how they ever kept it warm. I never found out that, but I know what they was talking about. And I want to tell you what. We want to keep the warmness and the spirit of God. And when somebody comes into the church, we've had people come here, and I, I give God the glory for it because sure ain't me, and it ain't you. But I've had people to come in here and say, man, just something got a hold of me. 
I mean, I, I mean, man, I just felt like this is the place I ought to be. Matter of fact, we just had a family felt that way. Uh, Tom and uh, Teresa over here, uh, Royals, and 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 they just come and they said, "Boy, first time we come in here, this is this the, the, the Lord spoke to us." And several of you have told me the same same thing before. Well, now that comes from God. That don't come from you and I. Say Amen right there. That comes from the Lord. See what I'm saying? And so we need to fan that. Hey, we need to fan that. Uh, and, and then not only that, uh, uh, we need to make sure that we not only fan it, but number two, we need to enjoy it. If we're going to keep what we got, we got to enjoy it. I want you to go to Philippians chapter 2 and look at verses number 14. He said, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Now stay with me. I'm going to go through this in pretty fast because I had more singing. But, but I ain't going to cut the message short. But you just listen. But we need to enjoy it. What do you mean by that, preacher? Well, we don't need to be a bunch of grumblers and complainers and... And, uh, and stirring up something all the time. Bless God, we need to enjoy. Notice what he said, do all things. That means going to church, being in church in the house of the Lord without murmurings, that's complaining and disputing, that's fussing and all that kind of stuff. We just need to enjoy what God has given us. Fan it, keep it going. Keep it fan it. Hey, Plant, plant, fan that flame. Say amen and, and, and encourage the preacher and encourage one another. Keep fanning what God's doing, you know. And then we need to enjoy it. Don't, cl don't cl complain about it. Don't grumble about it. Well, uh, preacher, I don't like this. I, well, I don't like a lot of stuff, but I like what God's doing. Say amen. Now, here's some things that we don't need to grumble about. Number one, we don't need to grumble about the old-fashioned preaching. Now, I, I, I do not apologize whatsoever. We had a family that come here two or three weeks ago that came to the church. Uh, it was a man and his wife. They come into the church, and they heard me preach on Sunday morning, and they left, and they went back. Somebody visited them, and they said, uh, oh, no, we won't be back. And said, well, why won't you come, why won't you come back? Said, well, that, that man just preaches too hard. Said, uh, his preaching's too hard. Uh, said, see, we're living together. We're not married. And we're living together. And that morning he said that was sin. And said, we, uh, that made us feel uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, bless God, it ought to make you feel uncomfortable. You understand? And I didn't even know they was here. I didn't know they was in the building, in the services, the, anything like that going on. But, but uh, hey, uh, hey, old-fashioned preaching. We just need to get back to some old-fashioned preaching. Don't, don't grumble about the preaching, you know. Uh, hey, Paul said, I can't give some of you meat. I have to keep giving you milk because you won't grow up. But, uh, but don't let the, the, the meat, sometimes the meat will strangle us, you know. But we need to just stick with the old-time preaching. Let me tell you something to turn this nation back to God. I'm going to tell you what to turn this nation in the face of God, back to the face of God. If the pastors and preachers in this country, all across America that believes this book, and, and, the, and I'm talking about the ones that have compromised too, would stop their compromising and crawl back into these pulpits and point out sin and tell people that abortion sin is murder and tell people that, hey, to go out here and live a life of homosexuality, God's uh, uh, judging that sin, uh, to go on and preach against anything, uh, everything that moves, drugs, alcohol. Man, old Billy Sunday used to get up and preach against uh, booze. He called it booze. And now he'd get so mad, he'd throw chairs at the wall and bust them and all that kind of stuff. about. And I know that's not all the time preaching, throwing chairs. Uh, well, I'll throw one if you want me to, but I, I, I don't know if I got the strength to pick it up now. But I'm just saying, uh, the whole thing about it, they expose the sins of people. Uh, I remember, oh man, my mind's went wrong. But who was it founded? Uh, Larry, can you help me? Or Ronnie uh, uh, founded the uh, independent movie uh, movement. He had two churches, one in Texas, one in Michigan. What was his name? Can y'all help me out? Can you remember? None of y'all can remember that? Huh? Anybody? Help me out if you met. Well, I'll, if I think of it, I'll tell you. But uh, anyway, he pastored two churches. And they both ran over 6,000. One in Texas and one in uh, Michigan. And what he would do, he was the founder of the Independent Baptist Movement. Movement, Really, he's the one that got it going. And he, uh, he, would, he would fly 
from, uh, he'd preach and, and, uh, one Sunday at, uh, uh, in Michigan, and then he had assistant pastors that would do the next uh, uh, service there. And he'd done this uh, one week. It'd be a whole week at one uh, church, and then the next week at another and down in Texas. Ran over 6,000 in both of them. And, uh, and he uh, stood against sin. Man, I'm going to tell you what. Now, you say, preacher, you wouldn't do nothing. No, I don't think I would. You know, you can't copy people. You know, a lot of people tried to be like Carl Lackey and them fellows, and they tore their churches all to pieces. You just got to be what God makes you to be. You understand what I'm saying? Be what God wants you to be. But uh, anyway, he, uh, <laughs> he uh, was coming. Uh, the, the papers was just drilling him. I, I mean, just giving him a hard time, and he was preaching against uh, booze and sin, and sin so hard to call and liquor out and, and uh, it was during prohibition time and, and man he was pointing this stuff out uh, and, uh, and people up in Washington was getting upset with him and man the papers and he was coming uh, down to church one of the places I don't remember if it was Michigan or Texas and he was coming there was a wreck a car wreck and what happened was uh, this man was so drunk that he ran over with his car in front of another, hit him head on, threw him through the windshield and, and just shredded his body basically and his brains busted his head open. His brains was laying right there on the highway. And he, and it's, he got him a paper bag and he went over and scraped up the man's brains and put them in the bag and took them and laid them on the platform and said, now this is what booze at the service that night. said, this is what alcohol will do to you. said, I just passed the man's brain. This is his brain where he was drunk. Now you say, no, I ain't going to do nothing like that. Don't worry about that. But I'm just saying, hey, there were some men years ago, they didn't mind exposing sin. I mean, uh, you take Herschel Ford, he preached a whole sermon on the wiles and the wickedness of dancing, why it was wrong to dance. And he'd bring out a lot of stuff on that. And some people today now, our so, so-called modern-day churches, we, don't think, we think it's fine. We dance in the church and everything else, you know. You know? Now, hey, don't look at me like I'm strange. I'm just telling you something. Don't despise old-fashioned preaching. When people preach the Bible, I'm talking about the Bible, the Word of God, and the Bible talks about booze, and the Bible talks about uh, drugs, and the Bible talks about abortions, and the Bible talks about uh, this thing on homosexuality. God's Word talks about this stuff, and if a man preaches it, hey, just enjoy it. Don't go fighting it, you know. Not only that, we need to enjoy this thing of old-fashioned singing. Listen, I, you can have that old modern stuff. It ain't got no meat to it. The songs we heard this morning, this choir sung, I'm on the winning side, and these songs we, uh, we've heard sung today, and Miss Penny and, and Marty and all, hey, uh, let me tell you something. And that old-fashioned singing, it has some meat to it. Man, I'll find myself, somebody will sing something, Penny or some of them, or Carol, or, well, all of them, Gene, oh, Gene, that song on uh, water, you know, man, I, <laughs> I thirst, you know. I mean, I find myself singing that thing during the week, you know. I mean, it's got some meat to it. It's got some meaning to it. It's got something that's got some, what do you call, body to it or whatever. Hey, don't despise that old-fashioned singing. Some of this old stuff that you don't realize. Hey, I've had people, and I've had some right down here in the road visit them. Uh, it's been a few months back. And, and I went to the door, and he said, Man, I'm going to a church because my, my daughter wants to go there, and the music's so wild there. He said, I got saved. Uh, when I was, got saved, I was, a, I was a dope addict and a drunk. And he said, I'd go to these rock concerts. And he said, Preacher, I'm telling you, I can't tell the difference in our church, their music, than the, a lot of these rock concerts I used to go to. Well, I ain't going to sit there and listen to that kind of mess. Man, I like something that's, I can go home, oh, how I love Jesus, and nothing but the blood of Christ, and hey, uh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound saved the rest. Now, you can take that home with you, buddy, and that'll help you. That'll encourage you in the Lord. And so just enjoy it. Hey, how do we keep what we got? Uh, hey, don't grumble. Don't, uh, don't despise old-fashioned preaching. Don't despise uh, old-fashioned singing. And don't despise old-fashioned services. What do you mean by that? Uh, some people say, man, I don't like to hear people shout. It makes me nervous. It excites me. <laughs> hey, a child of God get blessed. And God just pour a little honey down in their soul. And they begin to rejoice in the Lord and praise the Lord. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Amen. 
Nothing in the world wrong with that. People saying amen and hey, people go, I, I, I've been in some churches and you just sit there like, you know, I've preached revivals. You sit there like, a, uh, like you're just a, 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 a something dead, you know, just say, some of them are dead. They just sit there like that, won't turn their head to the left, won't turn their head to the right. Nobody says amen, nobody says nothing. They get up. And so you, you, they say, well, you ought to do everything decently in order. Well, it, it, I think it's pretty decent and pretty in order to give glory to God. That's what the Bible says. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Now, I'm not talking about, I'm not trying to work up something here today. I'm not trying to work people up to jump up and run around and holler and scream. Not, but if God blesses you, if God moves on your heart, if God blesses your soul, you and I got something to shout about. And we should not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. We can grieve Him from doing not doing that. And so we ought to fan it. We ought to enjoy it. Number three, we ought to support it. What do you mean, Pastor? We ought to support it with our time. Our time. Uh, people don't have time for God no more. They don't have time to serve the Lord. They don't have time to be, get busy and do something. We ought to find something to do for God and do it. And not only our time, but our talents. I thank the Lord for these that have using their talents to play and to sing and all that. I, I thank God, and not only that, but people are using talents. You know, uh, uh, some, uh, uh, especially our, our friends in the back here, they don't know this, but, but uh, God is blessed, and we've been able to get a little van ministry going, and that thing has sort of just <laughs> got to going, I'm telling you. And, and while this service is going on, out in the fellowship part, there's a Congo preacher preaching to some of those uh, people out there that don't speak uh, English, they speak Swahili, and they're preaching to them in their language. Then there's a little class right here, that little class, that little one this morning's about to run out the doors. They got a crowd in there today, ain't they, brother? Yeah, and I mean, they got a crowd in there today. I think they ran out of chairs. We had them little chairs we'd bought, and they got a little crowd, uh, uh, three years old, up to five. And then on up here is another class, and uh, from uh, a three-year-old, six to uh, uh, nine, and uh, no, let's see, uh, six to something, six to nine, yeah. Then we've got another class, 10 to 12, and then there's another, and things is going on right now while this is going on right here, you know. People are hearing about Jesus and hearing the gospel. Hey, I'm here to tell you, uh, people are saying, I'm willing to use my talent that God has given me. God gave my talent to teach these kids. And here they are teaching them the word of God. We don't know the results of some of that. D.L. Moody, the man I've just talked about, this great church was saved at 12 years old by a little old Sunday school teacher who didn't have nothing but a fourth grade education. And he went in there and talked to him in a shoe shop and led D.L. Moody to the Lord at 12 years old. You don't know what God can do in these little kids' lives. Sometimes they're mean as a devil, but let me tell you what, God can turn them into an angel. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing what he did in my life and yours too. I've been talking about change our lives. And so we need to support it with our time, our talents, and our treasury. As I mentioned a while ago, God's been good to this church and thank the Lord for his blessings. And, 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 and hey, uh, when I talk about treasure, I'm talking about our tithes, our missions, offerings, and all these things. God will bless you forgiven uh, materially. And I don't have to tell a lot of you folk that. Y'all know it. Then last of all, I want to give you this last thought. Uh, we need to get in it. Turn to the book of Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1. Just get in it. Don't stand on the outside. Uh, what did I say? Exodus 1? What did I, I meant to say another. Exodus chapter 17. I'm sorry. Exodus chapter 17. And you find here uh, in verses uh, 5 through 7, now listen up. This is where Moses smote the rock. The children of Israel did not have water. And so God told Moses with uh, the leaders to go up and to smite the, the elders of Israel and smite the rock. And when they did, fresh water come out for the children of Israel. That's a type of Christ Jesus being smitten on the cross. They, water brings life. And Christ is the water of life. And so we see in the Old Testament scripture here, an example or a typology of 
of when he smit the rock, Christ is the solid rock. He's the rock of our salvation. When Moses smit it, it was uh, hit it with the rod. That's a type of Jesus dying on the cross. He was crucified for us. He was smitten for you and I. And when he died, life come out, the water of life. And whosoever will, let him come and drink of that water of life freely, the Bible tells us, you know. Now you go on down, said in verse number 8, look at this. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Repidine. Repidine. And then came Amalek. Now who is Amalek? Amalek was the grandson of Esau. And that Esau, of course, was the flesh, as it resembles the flesh. We have Jacob, the spirit, Esau, the flesh. And here, uh, the grandson of Esau, Am- Amalekites. And when you read about the Amalekites, you read about the flesh. If you notice something here, when you get the water of life, the Lord Jesus, what shows up next after you get saved? The old flesh, don't it? And then came Amalek, then the old flesh. The old flesh shows up after you get saved. Well... What happened was they were battling, they were fighting. Well, look in verse 10. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and and fought with the Amalekite, that is the old flesh. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hands, Amalekite prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on, and Aaron and Hur, look at this, stayed up his hands, the one on one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And look at verse 13, what happened? And Joshua discomfited Amalekite, the Amalekites, the flesh, and his people with the edge of the sword. If you're not going to get victory over the flesh, We can't let our hands down. That's a good illustration, isn't it, in the Bible. We can't let our hands down. When you start letting down, folks, the flesh is going to take over. And so they was winning the battle. If you're going to have victory in your heart over this old flesh and the world and the devil, you're going to have to keep them hands held toward the Lord. Keep them up. Now, how did it happen? Well, there was two men. One of them was Aaron and one was her. And old Moses would hold them up in his hands and get so tired. And as long as he held them up, boy, the, the, the Israelites and Joshua, they was winning the battle. But when them hands started coming down, then all of a sudden the Amalekites, the flesh, would start taking over and winning the battle. So they figured something out. They set Moses down on a stone and one got on one side and held one hand up, and one held the other up, and they held them up all day long. And as long as they held that, flesh, uh, that hands up, the battles was won. And Joshua discomfited them. He destroyed them because God gave the victory. Folks, I want to tell you something. If we're going to keep what we got, we got to get in it. We need people to hold people's hands up and help hold their hands up, help hold our missionaries up, and these bus workers up, and these children's church workers up, and the choirs up, the musician, the pastor, the deacon. We need people just to hold one another's hands up. If we see them starting to fade and slip, we need to do all we can to encourage them, not discourage them. We're not here to discourage one another. We're here to encourage one another. Amen. And we need to make sure to encourage one another and try to help pick them hands back up because if not, the old flesh is going to take over. So that's just a few things there. I've rattled and rambled around. I hope you can use them. And let's just keep what we got is what I'm trying to say. The Israelites lost what God had given them. And let's not lose what God has given us. Let's keep what and let's go forward and get even more. Of the blessings of the Lord. Let's bow our heads, every head bowed, every eye closed while they come to sing and get ready. If you're here today, you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If this is your last day on earth, now I've preached a long time today, but if you don't know you're saved, I want you to come. Get this thing settled with God. I wonder how many really knows if you died, you'd go to heaven. You say, I'm a saved child of God, and I know it. Let's see your hand. Hold them up high if you know that. Now, if you don't, don't you lie to God. Thank you. You can put them down. Now, if you don't know that, 
will you let me do something for you? Will you let me pray for you? You say, Pastor, I don't know that. Would you just remember me in your prayers when you pray? Would you slip that hand up? I'd like to pray for you if you'd let me. I don't know I'd go to heaven if I died. All right, I see that. We're going to pray for you. Somebody else, I'm just not sure of that, Pastor. And I want to make sure of this thing. And just pray for me. Will you pray for me? And I promise you we're going to pray for you. Is there anybody else? Just slip that hand up let me pray. All right. Okay, there's another one. Let's pray for them. There's two that needs our prayers today. Somebody else, I don't know if this was my last day on earth, I'd go to heaven. Will you pray for me, Pastor? Okay, another, oh, I see it. Okay, I see that. God bless you. I didn't see it, honey. I, I'm sorry. All right, there's three. Is there another? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, you folk get to praying. You that know the Lord, start praying for them. I they, you didn't see, they didn't see your hands, but they're praying for you right now. Now, is there somebody here this morning that say, I'm just not where I ought to be with the Lord. I want my church to keep what is God, and I want my church to keep going forward. I love my church. I love my Lord. I love what God's done, what He's doing, what He's going to do. Pastor, pray for me that I'll be faithful and that I'll keep my hands up. I won't let the old flesh take over. God knows I need that. Let's see your hands. Hold them all. Yes, thank you so much. A lot of hands, several hands here. God bless you. You come on to the altar too, Christian, if you need to, and you come. If you're not saved, you come. Lord, I pray for those that are not saved. I ask you in Jesus' name they'd leave that seat right now in just a moment. Come on down here. Give their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ before it's too late. God save sinners today. Oh, don't let the devil take a one of them to hell. Then I pray for God's people. They'll come and just get around this altar, whether they raise their hand or not, and pray God to continue to bless us, the church and this local assembly and keep his hands upon us. And we'll thank you as you have these 60 years, oh God, in Jesus' name. Our heads are bowed, eyes are closed, no one's looking. Let's stand to our feet while they have the invitation song. You come on right now. If you want to be saved, come on. Come on. We're not going to embarrass you. We're just going to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You come on right now if you would. Join us down here. Would you come? Come on. God bless you. Okay.
While God is speaking to your heart, you listen to the Holy Spirit as he speaks to your heart. You come on. Somebody else. You're not ready to go. You're not ready to die. What are you waiting on? Can you not see that this old world is rocking and reeling? We ain't got much, I don't think, much time left down here, folks. And one day you're going to put it off too late. You're not here by mistake. You need to come. Come on right now. Give your heart to Jesus. Just as this dear lady has come this morning wanting to be saved, why don't you come and trust the Lord as your Savior? Will you come meet us? Then if you're here this morning, we had a, a man come this morning wanting to join into the fellowship of the church. If you'd like to come and join into the fellowship of the church, if you've been saved and, uh, and you'd like to come and join into the fellowship of this church, you come, we'll talk to you about it and make sure everything's right. Would you come if you'd like to do that too? Play another verse, Sue. So keep playing if you would. Just come on. Come on, if you want to. We're just dealing with some folk down here and making sure everybody's getting everything settled. It needs to do. We still got time. You come on. I know it's getting late, but you come on. This is God's time. You come on. Obey the Lord. All right, look this way, if you would, folks. This morning, David, come on over here. Ronnie, how about come stand with him, if you don't mind. David Hedgecock, he's come this morning by statement to join into the fellowship of the church. I asked David if he knew he was saved. He said, most definitely. He's followed the Lord in believer's baptism also. And so just stand there with him, if you would, there for a moment. Then we have Diane Rog... Rog I'm sorry, Diane. And she come accepting the Lord. Uh, Kay, would you come over and stand with uh, Diane? And Diane come this morning accepting the Lord as her Savior. Amen. And the Lord is good, isn't he? And it's such a joy to see these folk come make some decisions for Christ. And let me say to you that that's about to walk out of here without the Lord. You make sure, see me or somebody else before you leave this place and make sure that you're saved. Don't leave here without the Lord. You may never get another another chance if you think about that. So we're rejoicing.